Hey church, and welcome to another episode of Reviving Hope. I hope you guys' week is going well. I want to share something with you from my favorite, personally my favorite gospel account, Luke. Uh, Luke is my favorite gospel account, one, because Luke was not a disciple. He wasn't one of the 12 that followed Jesus during his life, uh, but Luke actually followed Paul. And Luke, in his gospel account, gives it in chronological order, but he also includes some things that are not in the other accounts of Scripture, some special things, uh, especially in the early life of Jesus. And uh, I think that that is really cool, despite the fact that Luke wasn't somebody that followed Jesus when he was on earth. So he kind of had to put his nose down and to be and to do the research uh, to figure these things out. And so in the beginning, we're going to be in Luke chapter two today, and we're going to introduce one of my favorite characters uh, in Scripture. Uh, but in Luke chapter two, what's kind of what's going on is uh, the first chapter of Luke. He kind of gives a lineage of Jesus uh, from Mary's family tree. Uh, Matthew does Joseph, Luke does Mary's, and uh, then we go we go down and we get introduced to someone who uh, I think is one of my the, the best people in all the scripture. Um, and anyway, the, the cool thing about it is Luke actually mentions his name here, and that's an important part. Uh, whenever we are reading scripture, whenever we are looking into God's word, is when that author decides to mention someone's name, that means that this person was important to the audience. Um, so I want to pick up in Luke chapter 2, verse 25. Um, and verse 25 says, and says, Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And this man was righteous and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him. And this is my favorite part. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Christ. And then he and then this and he came in the spirit into the temple. And when his and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him according to the customs of the law, he took him up in his arms and blessed God. And so the reason why I want to, uh, the reason why Simeon is probably my favorite uh, account, uh, favorite character in all of scripture is you see this guy have the Holy Spirit living inside of him, just like we do now once we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. You see this before Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, before Pentecost. So this guy was something special, uh, something special set apart from most people in all of scripture. And the reason why I'm sharing this passage today, I know it might be sound like a, a Christmas passage or something like that, but I think it has relatability to today. Can you imagine being Simeon? Can you imagine being told by the Holy Spirit that God was going to do something and do something as big as the consolation of Israel, do something as big as send the Messiah to save the world? Something that people have been waiting on for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. Can you imagine trying to live with that kind of waiting and that kind of patience to say, hey, before you die, this big thing is going to happen. I think that we kind of are like that right now. I think we've kind of found a normality in our situation in this pandemic as much as we can. But now we're just kind of waiting patiently to see what God is going to do. We're kind of waiting patiently to see when is this going to end? When uh, when it, when are we going to get back to living life the way that uh, is intended for us to live? And so when I think about this, I want to challenge us to be like Simeon, righteous and devout. And that even though we don't know when all of this is going to happen, Simeon didn't know a day either. He just knew the promise that the Lord had. And the same promise maker and promise keeper in God that Simeon served is the same God that we serve. And so we need to know and we need to trust that God is going to do a work. And we may not know what it looks like right now or how it looks like or when it's going to happen. But we need to be like Simeon and to wait and to wait patiently and to wait actively seeking the Lord. 
And that is my challenge for you this week to go look Luke chapter two, verses 25 and look at Simeon and look at his example of, of what he gives and how he waits with the biggest promise the world has ever known. And how can we wait with the prom with the promises that we feel the Lord has to wait for God's will? Have a great day.